I'm Sarah Ryan and I'm from Chesapeake, uh, Nova Scotia. I graduated from Eastern Shore District High School in 2001. Eastern Shore, or ESDH. Go Mariners! <laughs> I was really excited to go on to the next part of my educational journey and that was to do my Bachelor of Science at Mount St. Vincent University. And when I was 18, I didn't necessarily know what field, but I kind of just applied for the main courses, one including my first technology course, which was computer science. Now I thought I was going to be taught how to build my own website. It turned out to be C++ code which is not entry level as far as coding goes. And at the time I didn't even own a laptop or a personal computer. So when I went to high school, we had a typewriter lab. We did not have a computer lab. So I was really excited to join this course and this opportunity to have some technology. And I was a little disappointed to find out that of the class of 23 or 24 students, I was the only female in that class. The second disappointment came when I realized that I wasn't going to be building my own little website that got to showcase my favorite bands and that sort of thing. But indeed, I would be doing C++ on paper and pencil. And why am I the only female in this class? Also, why is it so dry and not engaging? But I persevered through it and continued with my, um, at that point, I decided I was going to do biology and psychology for my degree. My involvement with Brilliant Labs is kind of an interesting story. I had been working with a for-profit science education organization after graduating from university. And I was looking to work within an organization that was not for profit or charitable in status so that we would have the ability to reach some of the youth that weren't necessarily able to be involved in the programming with the company that I was with. I received a call from Mr. Jeffrey Wilson. He was really interested in my background what I was doing, how I was interested in science and making and doing hands-on learning. He did say, I'm going to offer you the job, know that it's a startup and it may not be here next year. And this is 2015. Are you willing to take a chance? And I said, 100%, I'm absolutely ready to take a chance. Let's do it. So fast forward eight years later, here I am. I'm the director of community programming and development for all four Atlantic provinces. When I started in 2015, it was really just the three of us. It was Jeff Wilson, myself, and another lady. And we were present in Nova Scotia, New Brunswick. So we were busy. We were constantly on the road. The concept of maker spaces or maker-centered learning isn't that different from project-based learning but we still had to sell the vision and the opportunity to the teachers that we worked with. And some of those teachers who we presented to eight years ago and we had to say, you know, there's value in this. Well, I mean, what are your interests in? And they would say filmmaking or knitting or what have you. Then we would connect that with their passion and how they would set that up in their school and share that with their students and their community essentially. Oh, exploratory and hands-on learning is so important because it looks at the person and individual and it gives them the opportunity to have onus over their education and to really let their passions shine. It's not rigid, it's not a standardized test, it really allows one another to be passionate and allows others to see the passions. Youth, teachers, parents, they forget that they're actually in an educational setting. So we're actually transforming the face of education by simply listening to people giving them a voice, giving them the tools and the opportunities so that they can learn and have that ownership over their education and share that with others. One of the greatest things about doing the maker-centered learning model or project-based learning is that it allows youth to have the ability to try and fail. Later on in life, as adults, we don't always, we're not always afforded that opportunity, at least we don't think we are. The youth are coming out of the, the situations and the um, opportunities to do this kind of work and have this in their educational setting are going to be the ones who are willing to put their foot out and take a risk and be able to be the innovators, the ones who solve those big problems or small problems, but it's going to give them the confidence that they wouldn't necessarily have received otherwise in a traditional educational setting. The role that Brent Labs plays in getting kids to be able to really explore and dig into the hands-on learning is by simply providing the supports and tools. And often that supports can also mean the guidance from teachers, from videos, from anything but being able to give them what they need to empower themselves is what essentially has been able to, to, to make that change, to create that wave. So there's a huge social-emotional um, aspect to being 
uh, in a maker space or working on projects collaboratively. When students are allowed to unpack the equipment themselves, set it up, and they feel like it's actually theirs, then, funny enough, we find fewer things that grow legs and go missing or you know get broken because there's actually a respect for what they're working with, the tools, the opportunity to have access to this kind of learning, and to be able to share that with others. Brilliant Labs to me is a way of life. As a person who works with the great team of Brilliant Labs, it really influences what I do on the day to day. It's not a job, it's a passion project. Brilliant Labs is an opportunity for all people who work with the organization, educators, youth, community, and a way to break through of the rigid traditional styles of the past. Our students bring solutions, not problems. Thank you.